So when the bell rings, you get 100% me every single time. And I feel like that's, that's my outlet, that's my passion, that's what I love. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Out of Character with me, Ryan Satin. This week, we have got a five-time Raw Tag Team Champion, two-time SmackDown Tag Team Champion. He's a former United States Champion and winner of the first Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Everyone, please welcome to Out of Character, the Swiss Superman, Cesaro. Cesaro, thank you so much for taking the time to do this today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I love my own I, yeah, I love that you have the sound effects. It's the best. You you become one of my favorite people to interview just because you have that soundboard. It really like elevates the interview. Yeah, thank you. I feel like to me that's it became kind of part of me thanks to thanks to doing that. But um, it's it's a lot of fun because it mostly because it catches people off guard. They interview you and they're like, what what what? Oh yes, it's soundboard. So yeah. <laughs> I listened to another podcast called This Is Important with the guys from Workaholics. Uh, that show that used to be on Comedy Central, and uh, Blake, Blake from that show, he's the soundboard guy, and he, I, it's so funny. I feel like it's really fun to be the soundboard guy because you don't have to necessarily chime in as much with your own thoughts. You can just use the soundboard to make jokes. Yeah, and it's kind of it becomes this like it takes a life of its own, uh, and you have to. But but here's the problem: you always have to find something that's current. <laughs> or at least in some way, shape, or form relevant to what you do. And um, you cannot overdo it. You know what I mean? So, um, but like, I remember when I grew up, there was like a TV show. It was like a late night show where the host had like buttons that was the same thing. It was just like a soundboard, but like, like it, it would play a clip with it. And I always thought like, man, that's awesome. But you know, there's so much technology and production stuff going in it. And nowadays it's kind of, I made my own soundboard that I can bring around, you know, like, when I go to other people's houses. So it's good. It's a good time. <laughs> Technology is coming far away. <laughs> well, I start off every interview asking the same question, uh, and I'm going to ask you this as well. How much of your real true self is there in the character that you play on TV? Uh, I would like to think as, as much as possible because I feel like any, at least once the bell rings, when the bell rings, you get 100% me every single time. And I feel like that's, that's my outlet, that's my passion, that's what I love. And uh, in order to produce something or present something that's authentic, I always try to find as many um, like similarities to my, to my real personality in my character. And I'm, I always felt that especially nowadays with so much media to consume that if something is not authentic that you just people nowadays more than ever just you can't tell it like people may not like consciously know but they can just tell and uh, for me it was always extremely important to be authentic and to be kind of uh, maybe because of that different from everybody else yeah, I, I think authenticity is incredibly important in today's environment with social media because people want to connect with someone that they relate to. And I think that uh, that that authentic self really helps with that. And I remember I was watching your uh, I was watching the WrestleMania 24. Yeah, the WrestleMania 24, where they talk a lot about your career in it. And it was it was interesting to me to hear you talking about how that that kind of topic where you were talking about how you know it was kind of uncomfortable for you to to take on characters who weren't true to yourself when you first started in the company so um it's it's i can see why you'd want to play a character that's more authentic to yourself now well to me it was it was just a, a huge challenge because it's like you want to play the character right and you want to play well so in order to do that you have to find something that's true to you and i feel that's any um actor will hopefully tell you the same thing and it's to, when when you when you get told like okay um you're a rugby player from switzerland or now you yodel it's like okay uh how do i find something that's me in there and how can i make this as good as possible and still be authentic to the viewer that when they look back in 10 years or now they'll be like oh yeah that was that was just um um as dusty Rhodes would say um you know like uh, um, what was his famous? You know, he would just say that's just part 
of your story. You know what I mean? That's like, uh, yeah. So speaking of your story, was it difficult for you when you first started in wrestling to take a gamble on yourself by moving to America to pursue wrestling full time? Because I feel like the, the, the like balls it has to take to do something like that, just to go to another country and be like, I'm going to go do my dream. I feel like it takes some real uh, balls. Like I was saying, uh, was it difficult for you to do that? Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's uh, it, just imagine that um, whatever the job is that you want to do and that you dream about doing, um, that does not exist essentially wherever you're at. And then think about that. That's completely ridiculous and nobody would take you a seriously or think that that's a smart idea for you to do. Um, and then you would just be like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm going to, you know, leave everybody that I've ever known or loved, you know, just, and that's what you do. Um, but I'm not looking back on it as in like poor me or anything like that. I just look back on it. Yeah. That's what you, what, what you have to do. And, uh, wrestling is still uh, very much, uh, like a kind of a, uh, not mainstream it's kind of like a curiosity i would like to say something like that you know um and but it's it it inspired a lot of my friends to take leaps of faith you know or like i see people um from switzerland or from europe that tell me like um i actually uh i met an actor from switzerland that told me that he saw me on a live event he worked at, like in like a bank or something in New York, he saw me on a live event. And he was like, wow, that's really cool that somebody from Switzerland is actually out there doing this. And he uh, quit his job and became an actor. And now he's on like TV shows and everything. So uh, to me, to me, like stories like that, um, justify to me, uh, what I do, and it motivates me. And it kind of gives me the validation that what I did was um, I mean, like, I mean, like, I have all the validation I need that what I did was right. But it just <laughs> it, it, it helps that, okay, cool, what I did actually inspired some people uh, in some way, shape or form to follow their dreams, uh, as crazy as they may sound. Yeah, I that's so cool that someone said that to you that that's got to be such a, a special thing to you that someone was so inspired by you. I mean, you, I, I would think that I would, th I mean, you doing that inspires me. I mean, I think it's crazy that someone could do that. Not in a crazy in a bad way, but just like, man, that's such a scary thing to just, I would never in a million years just move to Switzerland and try to have a job there. So the reverse of that just blows my mind that someone can do that. So like the other thing too, is like I had a really good job when I was working and um, I was just about to get a promotion to become like, you know, like, uh, even even the like senior manager or something like that. But I was becoming, it was uh, for Johnson & Johnson in Europe. So, you know, small company, nobody really knows them. <laughs> um, small and, thing. And, and, and uh, you know, I had, a, I had a really good job there. There was nobody else that did what I did and I was gonna get promoted. And in that same meeting, I was like, ah, you know, actually I got some news too, I quit. Uh, you know, so it was all kinds of crazy, but I feel anything uh, in life, um, that's that's worth risking everything for will be worth it you know because if that's your dream if you, if you get that chance you have to take that leap of faith and it's scary and it's hard but you never know like you don't want to be the guy that, that looks back in 20 years and was like man i wish i would have <laughs> no you definitely don't want to be that guy and i think that that's why i enjoy you know some of the motivational stuff that you post on social media even if you try to not be too motivational sometimes i know you try i know you try not to but i i feel like you shouldn't you shouldn't go away from it because you your story is one of an inspiration and people do look up to you so i think that you know you do motivate people so i think that even though you try to not be too motivational in your posts they are helpful good yeah, so to me it's like i same with like we, we talked about it earlier like i needed to be like authentic and uh i'm not the one that's going to post the motivational thing of like oh like, you know, like working out every day or like working out whatever hours or so because i always feel um there's somebody else out there that's probably you know works out at an even worse time or has even more on their plate and then um it's just social media is very me centric and you know, like, oh, poor me, I just had a bad day, but there's people that have way worse days. So if I can just have a little bit of motivation, like, oh, this is what I'm doing. I hope you're doing something well too. Um, I would like to be like that. So like, and also like the motivational quotes that are in my head, I don't think they're safe for sharing because they're always like pushing you to work insanely hard or like 
something like that. And I'm sometimes I think like I'm working out and I'm like, why am I doing this? And I'm like, no, no, you do this. You you, you get through it. And I'm like, I don't want to get some kid in his head that, you know, like uh, what was one of the quotes? I think it was Schwarzenegger or somebody said once that was like, you know, um, uh, if you're not working out, somebody somewhere is. And if you two meet, he will win. So like, I'm always like, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm tired, you know, like we just come off a plane. Uh, I don't really want to work out. I'm like, no, no, I got to work out because it's just in my head. So, Dude, I totally understand that though. I remember when uh, I used to be on Lillian Garcia's podcast, like way back in the day. And she said to me once, um, you know, you got to make some changes. Like you have to do things that you want for your own career because you're going to be mad if some, if an opportunity arises in Los Angeles and somebody else gets it besides you for wrestling. Like, you're going to be pissed. You're going to think you deserved it more. So you got to do what you got to do now and work all the time so that when that opportunity arises, it's yours. And I seriously took that to heart. And then when, you know, Fox started doing stuff with WWE, I was like, you know what? I think I did that. So I'm going to contact them and things worked out. So I, I completely understand that thought process. No, and, and it's always, like you just said, it's always the hard work that nobody sees, right? So it's like you work extremely hard and then you – somebody takes a chance on you and all of a sudden you're everywhere. You know, you're on this podcast, you interview all those WWE superstars and people are like, man, where did that come from? They don't see what came before, you know? And I think that's exactly it. Like you need to, you need to work hard because working hard is the right thing to do, you know, because at the end of the day, if you get the job or not, that's not up to you. Right. Like even, even for me, I got hired and fired from WWE way before I got this run. Uh, I did, I decided to just keep working as hard or harder, you know, like at the end of the day, if you, if you get the chance or not, may not be up to you, but you know, you will be ready and you did everything you could. In the most recent WWE 24 that I was talking about, you also talked about kind of feeling like you always need to prove yourself. Do you think that moving out here from Switzerland is partly why, like you feel like you need to prove your reason for doing that still? Uh, yeah, hundred percent. And also I feel I represent more than just me. I represent, uh, like I said, like people from Switzerland, people from, from Germany, and then it goes further. I feel like people from, you know, Italy, France, Europe in general, and then, uh, anybody that moves to a different country and, you know, follows their dream. I feel like I represent all of them as well. And then I also have to prove myself every time to me, you know, um, and then, uh, of course, uh, speaking of those motivational quotes that I don't want to share on my, uh, you know, social media, you get them all here. So uh, <laughs> perfect. Just listen, just listen to this. You get all the scoop. Uh, and, you know, that's actually a John Cena quote, but he said, you're only as good as your last match. So that is 100 percent true, because if your last match was a stinker, that's what people will, will remember. So to me, every single chance I get. I try to have a memorable match, even if it's one minute. I remember me and Mason uh, Wilkes-Barre had like one minute and we both try to make it like the best one minute match anybody's ever seen. And that's just, uh, to me, every time you go out there or have a promo or something, you have a chance to do something. And I always try to make it the absolute best. That's a lot of pressure to put on yourself though. I mean, like the fact that you're putting the like weight of, a, of multiple nations on your back each time you go in the ring, I feel like that's so much pressure. <laughs> that's my specialty that's my specialty i always i'm i'm really good at talking other people up and then myself i'm like okay pressure is on pressure is on so um but uh, you know it, it, it it's also very humbling and uh, a lot of fun then you know because i feel when i when we go back there or when i talk to people from all over the world um i have something in common with them i have a, a common thread that we can talk about you know and i feel like a lot of times uh people may feel that what people that they see on TV are out of reach or they're disconnected from everyday life. And I try really hard not to be. Um, and I feel that that gives me something in common um, with everybody. So I, one of the things I enjoy the most is traveling different countries, talk to different people, talk to different fans. Uh, it's just, it shows that we are all alike. And I feel it, it, the more people travel the more they appreciate a where they came from, where they're living now, and um, they understand different cultures and different people. Well, you know, speaking of that 24, it was clear from watching it that getting your own singles match at WrestleMania this year meant the world to you. Uh, how did you feel coming out of it when the match was over? What was your thoughts on it? Because you seem like you're kind of hard on yourself, so I'm wondering. 
Uh, so <laughs> I watched bits and pieces of it back. I haven't watched all of it back. You but, haven't watched um, the whole was, match back? I haven't watched the whole match back. So to me, um, I'll go into that later, uh, but I have to give it like two months at least to watch it back. Um, I do watch all my stuff back and I do watch bits and pieces that I know I need to watch back to improve or whatever um, back. But like I could watch the match back to like dissect it right away, which is what I usually do. But if I want to sit back and enjoy it, it needs to be like two months because then I uh, don't remember every single thing that I thought of that day and that moment. Um, but um, I was extremely happy with it. Um, even when I watched it back to dissect it, um, I was I, I was happy with it. I was happy with um, with what we did. Yeah, it was it was a great moment uh, before and after, and I made um, and of course during because like I, at that point I just I made a point to enjoy it um, because for example uh, you know uh, WrestleMania 30 with the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal that's kind of a blur in my head because there was so much stuff going on um, and this one I just made 100% sure that. I just gonna enjoy the whole day and uh, I take it slow and just enjoy every moment in the ring, outside of the ring, um, because it was also the first time back with fans. So that made it extra special um, because in my opinion, the fans are the only reason that I'm at where I'm at in my career. Yeah, uh, the, absolutely. Of course. I mean, the fans have always been behind you since, since like way back when, I mean, the Cesaro section, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's definitely helped make your career for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. And it, it it's um, I, I think I said that too. Uh, actually, I think it was Rollins the other day. I was like, you know, every time they show the highlight packages, they have different section signs. Like they had like, oh, you know, like the the Hawker section and there's Becky section, and uh, they had just had something the other day on SummerSlam too. Um, maybe with was it with Nikki or with Rhea? I don't know. But they had like a section which was just like the simple paper printed out in black and white. And I was always like, I always feel like, all right. That was the, the the first one was me with those and it's awesome and it just it, it warms my heart because it's always for for an underdog and it's always for somebody that the fans believe um, they need to get their due and it makes me it makes me really happy uh, to be to be part of that and I'm so proud of the Cesaro show. I was on the floor for the match against Seth Rollins at WrestleMania and the the just the energy from that crowd was something that like I still can feel right now. It was they were so behind you i think that the fans really have always been behind you and we really were excited to see that this was going to be like your wrestlemania moment what did it mean for you though to be able to get that moment against seth who is someone who you know has had so much success at wrestlemania already uh oh it was it was awesome it's like you said it just it felt right you know and then um, to be in the ring with seth um you know who i shared the road with and who is uh I think I said it in the 24 as well. I think he's, you know, this decade's Mr. WrestleMania. I mean, like all the stuff he achieved at WrestleMania, that's second to none. You know, I think nobody can can claim that. The the, the matches he puts on every WrestleMania, every summer, uh, SummerSlam as well. I mean, like anytime he gets in the ring too. We, we're kind of similar in that mindset that we always try to outdo each other. Uh, even, even when we're on the, like, obviously if we're in different matches on the same show as well, but even when we're in the same one, we just try to get the best result possible. And I think we we did that at WrestleMania. And um, to feel the crowd, because they always say like, oh, that's that like intangible, the crowd, the connection. And some people may not be able to figure out why I have that connection, but I do. And to me, it's like authentic and true. And that's what you saw at WrestleMania. That's what I felt. Yeah, I was surprised to see you so nervous before the match. I don't know if you were always nervous, but I just, you seem like a guy who, you know, you're so good in the ring that I wouldn't expect you to be that nervous before a match. Was it because it was such a big deal to you at WrestleMania, or are you typically that nervous before matches? Uh, so it depends. Uh, yes, I was nervous because it was WrestleMania, and if everybody comes up to you and goes like, hey, this is the biggest match of your career, are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> you, know, you know this is the biggest match, right? And I'm like... Yeah, I do. I do. Thanks for reminding me. And then uh, on, on top of that, you know, uh, all the other WrestleManias before, you know, we've been on live events. We've been touring for the whole year. So I had so many matches. And I'm one of those guys that doesn't think like, yeah, you know, I just take, you know, a year off and then I get right back in the ring and I haven't lost a step. Like, I'm like, okay, cool. Do I, do I still have it? Do I still do this? How does it feel with the crowd? Will I still be able to listen and react? And um, luckily, once I got out there, it just kind of, fell in place and um usually i'm 
I don't know if I'm nervous before matches. I think like if you don't get nervous, there's something like weird. I get like very excited because to me, when there's no net, that's the most fun. And I feel like sometimes I even put myself into situations where it's just like, what are you going to do? I'm like, I don't know yet. We'll find out when I'm out there. Just so there's like that, that like, like authentic, true reaction when you get there, because you can, you can plan stuff, but the best stuff, uh, usually happens when it just happens. And with, with like Rollins, uh, we wrestled each other so many times and, you know, like with the trust that, that, that that's there, we can just kind of go and feel it. And um, that's why like, it was just fun and I really wanted to knock it out of the park. And that's why I was so nervous. But to me, it's just like, it's also like the love for it. You know, even even if you go on a date with, with somebody that you've been together forever, like you're still kind of like nervous because yeah, I want to have a good date, you know, so yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I loved that you busted out the UFO during the match. That move is so sick. Thank you. I waited. I waited ten years for that. I literally. <laughs> well, uh, go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. Go. You finish first. No, no, no. Just, just. Uh, when I got here, some people saw saw me do it on, on on YouTube. They were like, "You have to do this. Why don't you do this? It blow people's minds." I'm like, "That's for WrestleMania, the the right match, the right time." And. Yeah, I, I would lie to you if if I would tell you I never doubted it. Um, there was plenty of times where I was like, well, maybe I should have busted it up because, you know, who knows if I get the chance. And I did. And well worth it. Well worth it. Yeah, I, I, since they replayed it so many times after, I assumed it was going to be like, an, you know, re-added to your arsenal after WrestleMania. But now I can tell that this is clearly just a special occasion move for you now. Yeah. 100% a special occasion move. Um, you know, SummerSlam would have been such an occasion. Uh, you know, so let's see. Let's see. Uh, but I feel there's a lot of things um, that get overdone. And I was like, okay, this is, like I said, like you said, a special occasion move. That, And uh, I think I said it once before, you don't see a UFO every day. So, <laughs> Well, okay, on that topic, I was going to ask you, totally left field here, but UFOs. Do you think aliens exist? I said left field. I mean, I think so, right? Uh, if you if you look if you look at it from a from a math standpoint, and all the stars and uh, all the different galaxies, I mean, math would suggest yes. I I am a firm believer in the existence of aliens. When I was a kid, I could I'm I've been convinced my whole life that I saw a UFO when I was a kid. So like I fully believe in aliens. Oh, you know, like growing up in Switzerland, where every every mountain uh, has its own like um, fairy tale book of like weird things that happened there and like weird creatures that's supposed to be living there and stuff like that. Like, there's definitely this like okay, uh, you know, and growing up on X Files too. So I don't know if that <laughs> really helped or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, here's another qu alien related question. Like I said, left field here, something you probably don't ever. Yeah, okay. If aliens came to Earth, do you think that humans as a whole would be able to get along with them and coexist? Or do you think an alien war would break out? Well, judging that uh, <laughs> it's really hard for us to get along with each other, even. <laughs> um, I mean, I would, I would hope so. I would hope so. I'm an optimist, so let's say I would hope so. <laughs> I don't know. I, I see. I feel like there's no way. I feel like there's no way like what you just said. Like we can barely all get along with each other. If some giant spaceship landed in the middle of Times Square, I feel like there would be a problem. Uh, there would definitely be a problem, I would believe. Like <laughs> you said, I feel like uh, we are we are trying to grow as a as a human race, but I, I, don't, I don't think we're quite there yet. I, I agree, unfortunately. Back to wrestling talk. I like that you're called the mayor backstage. You mentioned that in your in the 24 as well, um, because you make sure to talk with as many people working on the show as possible backstage. I think it's important for the crew to feel appreciated. Is that kind of why you do it? Uh, I mean, I appreciate the crew. They do so much. Um, and there's so many people involved in making us look as awesome as we do on TV. And, you know, and everybody always says cameraman. And it's like from cameraman to the audio guys, to the still photo guys, to commentators, to uh, the guys who do the lighting. You know what I mean? Now it's those crazy AR graphics that they have that just come in. And there's so many people. And to me, 
when you're at work, you're at work, right? So um, I could just sit in the corner and like read a book or something. Um, unfortunately, I don't read. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but <laughs> I just <laughs> I just walk around and I like I like to talk to people. You know, I um, I start bringing my own meals on the road, and I found that there's a microwave by um, uh, oh man, now I'm blanking on on their position, but it's um. Uh, I want to say it's like LED, LED okay. guys, like where, where all the LED guys are, they have a microwave. So I just started going there and microwaving my food and talking to that group, you know what I mean? And then you just start talking to the lighting guys because they always light the backstages and the camera guys. They become, because you, you see them so often, right? And you just start talking to everybody because to me, those are all people and they all have fun backstories and are interesting to talk to about different things. And it just kind of becomes a one giant family. You remind me of myself, though, in terms of, like, I also like to talk to the crew, and I, I, but it's not necessarily like to talk to the crew. I just never put myself above anyone. I don't like to feel like I, I, don't, I, I never do, and I think some people are able to do that, but I think that I'm the same way. Like, I'm, like, I'm helping the crew carry stuff sometimes. Like, I, I don't want to feel like I'm above them, you know? So, and I think that you're kind of the same way with wanting to be on their level. So, 100%. You know, it's, to me, it's we're, we're all there to do, to do the best we do and to put on a great show. And at the end of the day, you know, they're there to help their family, you know, and uh, like make a living themselves. And just because, I don't know, they put you on television, that doesn't give you the right to treat anybody else uh, like worse. And there's, a, you know, like you always, uh, I think William Regal said that, you know, um, you can always uh, tell the character by somebody in how they treat people that they perceive as uh, like not on your level or something like that. I don't know the exact saying. I probably messed it up because it's. That's you know, I get what you're saying. Uh, but but so like to me, it's always like people who are on the up. As soon as they're on the up, they start treating people differently, and then when they come down, then it's like, oh, okay, you want to be my friend again, you know? So <laughs> like, I never, I never want to be that guy, you know? So it's like, just treat everybody like you want to be treated, and you're fine. Is there anyone behind the scenes, though, that you could single out as someone who deserves some public recognition but maybe doesn't get it? Uh, there's there's so many, you know. Um, and I, I don't want to just name one or two because uh, I don't think that's fair. But to me, uh, you know, like those guys in the crew, they are on the road more than we are. And we are on the road an insane amount of time. And then, you know, like they do the loadout until one or two o'clock in the morning. Uh, and then drive on the sleeper buses, sleep a little bit there, and then start loading again the next day. So when we had those um, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday loops, you know, it was like pay-per-view on Sunday, load out, load in, and then go to the next time, do the same thing. And then by Tuesday, they were like, oh, you know, I slept like two hours in the past 48. So it's like, who am I to be like, I'm so tired, you know what I mean? So <laughs> it, just, it just kind of becomes like that. And to me... Um, life is about the connection that you make with people you know and the more you talk to different people the more you realize you know it we're all the same you have somebody then to talk to you don't feel alone and you have somebody to relate to and friendships in the end to me is is something that counts you know like you can if you're alone you're usually not happy right i mean like yes some people are very very happy when they're alone but it's it, it's cool to go to places and just say hello to people and they say hi back and you can have a short conversation and you know talk about stuff and it makes everybody feel good i feel like that's probably why you like coffee shops so much yes i do because it's kind of you go there you drink your coffee you just chill you can either chill or you know read a book uh talk to your friends and you get to experience part of the local culture like that's what i love it's like we see arena hotels airports but if you go to a coffee shop and i always try to find a local one it's like okay cool i have to go to the city i have to walk i have to you know like see what the daily life looks like in that town and it makes you feel like okay like i've been to i've been to paris what have you seen well uh, you know i walked around and i had some coffee and it was great so you can actually you can actually say you've been there instead of like yeah i traveled through it really quick yeah absolutely that that yeah absolutely i love that i love that about you in general of like getting to experience the different little local culture it makes it, it seems like if i was on the road i feel like that's what i would be doing too of like going to i wouldn't necessarily be going to the eiffel tower i'd be going to like try and meet some of the local people 
Yeah, so like that to me, it's too, it's when we, um, for example, when we went to Saudi Arabia, we, we found this um, cute little coffee shop and we we have one of the craziest Uber rides we've ever had. <laughs> we're like one of the craziest drivers. They just blasted loud music and was driving like a maniac on the highway. And um, we got there like four minutes before they closed for prayer because they closed for like an hour. And they were so nice. They just kind of like asked us where we're from and we told them and why we're here. And they got like super excited. They made us the coffee to go. We talked for like five minutes and uh, then we left. But they like, you know, stayed open like a minute or two later. Uh, and it was awesome. It was just cool to see that like different people from all parts of the world share their love for, for um, coffee. You know, we had the same way we went to South um, South America, South Africa. We went like in Japan, Australia, everywhere. It's just like it brings people together. And that's what I love about coffee. Well, switching gears here, have you been surprised by the success of your guys' Uno streams for Up, Up, Down, Down with the party? <laughs> Speaking of authentic, right? Yeah. Um, I have been because when we, we first started this, uh, was obviously last year during the um, pandemic. And it was kind of one of those like, hey, you know what? We need some um, We need some more content because that's what people were like watching. They were just watching content, right? So, and, it, you know, content is king nowadays right did i yes. say that right that seems yeah, like an yes. official moniker for everything like content is king. <laughs> yes. more 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 yeah <laughs> yes. yeah more more is more <laughs> so um <laughs> so we were like okay we want to do something fun for up up down down because we cannot film in the locker rooms anymore or on the road like we used to um so we were like okay let's um what can we play let's play uno and we were like okay who can we play with and it was like me breeze uh creed and we're like okay cole you know so we we tried one and like if you watch the first one and like how far it's come it's crazy and um we all got better equipment you know so because we nerded out and it was just one of those like okay it was just the four of us playing uno and seeing what happens and we we were talking so much about like god we just hope people like it because we love it so much and we will probably we're probably still doing it even if people can't watch it you know what i mean because like (laughs) it, it it literally became like, okay, let's talk for an hour before we start playing. And then we start playing and we're just going crazy with weird, obscure references that people actually enjoy and picked up. So we just had such a blast. Um, and then to see how people reacted to it and how gravitated to it and how the following grew uh, and where it ended up, like it's, it's something so special. And um we are so beyond grateful for it and then see how people were like oh we were looking forward to it it helped us get through last year and um it's it it, trust me they made our days when we when we filmed that yeah i i feel like you know i used to do a podcast with my friends and as much as it was like a thing i had to do for my website at the end of the day it was like mainly because it was my weekly fun time with my friends where we could sit and talk about whatever joke about stuff and just like have a generally good time so when an audience ends up following that it's it's so much fun yeah 100 percent. and it like that's what that's what it became was like okay me and my friends play uno and people can relate to it because if they play Uno with their friends or family, it's the same thing. Like one guy gets hot, sends another guy allegedly a glitter bomb in the mail, you know, just like stuff like that happens all the time. And (laughs) it's just, we had, we had so many good times and so many good laughs. And um, the best part is to me, it's that that's something that kind of showed everybody that like the the true selves of us, like how, how we are and that we are a bunch of, you know, nerds as well for for (laughs) different things because like i feel like i was a huge wrestling nerd growing up i mean like i was afraid to tell people that i liked wrestling because they were like oh that's stupid you know like and now look at me (laughs) haha who's stupid now right Uh, so so, (laughs) so, uh that was that was so much fun and just to see uh where it went with the own uno deck and all that stuff it's just i mean those are friendships that you have for life yeah, I, I, what was your reaction to learning that you guys were getting your own custom deck? I'm sure that that had to have like blown your mind. I, it was one of those, you know, we we started playing, and then it was kind of like, I oh, know it'd be cool if we had our own like deck. You know, what rules would we have and whatever. And then actually, um, uh, a buddy of mine introduced me, uh, Josh G from uh, Dead Boys Fitness, actually introduced me to one of his friends that works for Mattel, and then I introduced him to some, you know connected with up up down down and long 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 story and it was like 
for a while in the works. And even then it was like, well, you know, who knows? Something can happen and it doesn't end up happening. So you never know. But we were all like, dude, that would be so cool. That would be so cool. That would be so cool. And then like, we got it. And it's like, holy crap. This is like an Uno deck. Like it's Uno. Like we all played it as a kid. I played it in <laughs> Switzerland. Like Breeze played it in Canada. Colin uh, Creed played it in the States. Like this is universal. This is like real. This is awesome. And we were so pumped for it. Um, and then we we're like, okay, so what colors do we want? Like we we're like forest green, you know, we had, <laughs> so it was great. And then like obviously the challenge card and we can do all that stuff. So it was like so surreal. And again, like so much fun uh, for us. And in a, in a weird way, we were very happy to give back a little bit of like, okay, this is the joy that we had. So we have something to share uh, with everybody that watched it, you know, for the last year. So wait, you helped make it happen? You were the one that helped make it happen? I mean, I, I would... I, you could take I the credit. You could take credit for something no, 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 one no, time. No, 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 I, I, no, no, no. I don't, I don't need to take the credit. It was just like, it's, it's cool to see again like this. I felt like this is something that happened because of friendships, right? Of like, instead of just like, oh, no, no, let me just do this. It's like, no, you go and talk to people and meet people and become friends with them because they have similar interests. And now you're still friends with them. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's what life is, right? And um, I feel like this Uno deck happened because of friends. And the... Um, the party was successful because we were friends and i feel like that's the underlying theme of it so like i don't think like i deserve any credit i think it's a credit to the whole team and everybody that made it happen and it couldn't have happened without all those pieces in place and i feel like that's the same like we talked about before with the crew like the product that you see every you know monday and friday and tuesday that does not happen without each cog in place you know what i mean so um that's kind of the, the message I guess I'm trying to send. <laughs> That's fair, but you did need long, the Mattel number long, to make it happen. Long, so I'm just gonna long, say long story long. Long story <laughs> long, you know. Well well, how did you feel we'll move back to wrestling a little more here? How did you feel about your program with Roman Reigns? Um You know what I was disappointed about? I wish it would have been in front of fans. That's like the one thing was I was like that match, um, the build-up, everything, I wish it would have been in front of fans. But I, it was in the I, Thunderdome, sense, I, and it was still awesome. Yeah, but I, I can totally understand what you're saying there, because I feel like if, as as much as the, the Thunderdome audience was, was helpful in, in having a reaction, I feel like if that had happened in front of fans, the reactions would have been tenfold. I feel like it would have been huge for everybody like behind you, because that match ruled. You guys killed it. Yeah, thank you. Um, I feel like that whole build up um, from uh, my first match with, with Brian to um, essentially WrestleMania, it was like I was able to somehow create that momentum and I did the Talking Smack promo and that carried into the Roman match. And I felt like that in front of a crowd, um, you know, would have, would have been great. Um, but, you know, things happen. You know what I mean? So um, we made the best of it and uh, hopefully we can run it back one day. Well, do you think there's anything, because it seems like, you know, you're, you're fairly critical of yourself sometimes. Do you think there's anything that you need to work on in order to get back to title contention again now that fans are back? Oh, I always, I always try to, you know, like work on something, try to get myself better, you know, better shape, better in the ring, better talking, better promo, better, uh, you know, like a little bit character tweaks, things like that. Um, because I feel like as, uh, as soon as you think like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty freaking great. I don't need to do anything. I feel like that's it sure way of just plateauing um so i always try to find new ways uh it's it, it's really important to gain momentum i feel like that's the hardest part is to gain momentum and to maintain momentum if you're not given the momentum and uh so that's my next challenge get the momentum back <laughs> <laughs> well uh, this might be the most cliche thing ever but you know you seem like a guy who we've talked about your motivational quotes and stuff like that, uh, that you keep inside that you don't share with everybody else, but what motivates you? you every except day? here on the podcast. Yeah. Except, except, here, except on here on the podcast. Except, except here. here. Yeah. So, so, uh, well, so keep listening. There then. may be some more gems, right? Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, this is the perfect for that. You know? So what motivates you every day? Um, I just want to be a little bit better every day. So, um, 
you know, when people ask about like workout advice or whatever, it's like, I don't really have a goal of where I want to be in a year. I mean, like I have a general idea, but to me, it's like, okay, what can I do today better than tomorrow? You know, it's like, okay, so um, today is like scheduled workout. I, I'm, I, I'm going to work out. I'm going to be better. I'm going to try to lift a little bit more. Or even if I, for example, don't feel like it, like, okay, cool. How about I back off the weight and just do it with better form because my body doesn't feel, um, you know, as ready. So I'm actually listening to my body, but I want to be a little bit, better every day and when people ask me like what about like diet and stuff it seems so daunting i'm like yeah if you have like a six week program and look at it like that that's the surefire way of being like well that's too much i don't want to deal with it but if you look at it like day by day by day by the second week you're in a habit and then you just keep going so that's to me is a much easier approach if i'm like okay i want to learn another language or i want to learn an instrument instead of like okay um I have a one year course. I'm like, no, how about I just do it? I start today and then I'll do a little bit more tomorrow. And then, you know what I mean? So like, to me, that's the approach. And then of course I have like friends who motivate me or when I look at um, uh, the landscape of, um, of, of wrestling or where I, where I want to be, uh, that motivates me because I feel like I have to work harder um, to get there and to prove myself again that's the, the, the that's the whole like proving yourself thing and i don't want to i don't want to become complacent and i feel like every time like for example you asked me about um how much is real in the characters right uh when me and Seamus said like we don't set the bar we are the bar like that's literally what i believe and what we believe it's like every time we step in that ring it's the same with Seamus, like he puts 110% every time he steps in that ring. I mean, just his match with Drew again from Monday. Like, it's insane. They put on pay-per-view quality matches like every time. Yep. And like, I just texted him. I was like, hey, Shane, what are you doing? He was like, I'm in the gym working out. I'm like, all right, I guess. I guess so am I in a couple of minutes. It's like, you want to surround yourself with friends to motivate you and make you better. And, you know, so then it's like, okay, cool. I, I want to keep up. I want to be part of it. And then it just becomes a habit and a mentality. And to me, um, that's what motivates me. And it's also like the guys who go to work every day without just to support their family. You know what I mean? Like that's motivating to me. It's like people just go up and work and they do it because that's the right thing to do. Yeah. I, I was talking to Damian Priest last week about when he first lost a bunch of weight. And I was telling him that you know, when I do these interviews that sometimes I try to ask about motivation and stuff like that, because I need to find the thing that's going to make me go work out more. And I think that what you just said is the thing that always makes it hard for me is that I see this like year plan in front of me. and I'm like, Oh, I'm gonna have to do that for a year. And I think that you, what you just said actually may have helped me as a person because I, I do struggle with that of like, Oh man, am I really gonna put a year into this? But I guess like, like you said, if, if I start doing it week to week, I will just be in the habit of it. So th that's the, the thing. It's like people are like, okay, so a uh, workout plan. What? And I'm like, well, what do you like doing? Like, I don't care. Like when you start working out, you don't need to follow a plan. It's like one of my friends, um, when he tried to get in shape, he started doing uh, 10 pushups every day. And then week two, it was like 20 and then 30 and then 40. You know what I mean? Because it's like, yeah, he just started and then he did like, okay, I do like 20 in the morning and then like, you know, 30 at lunch and then 40 before I go to bed. And then like, within soon he like got jacked and I'm like, what, what the hell happened to you? And he was like, oh, well, I like doing push-ups. So like, okay, cool. You keep doing that because then you like push-ups and then like, oh, you know what? I'm going to add some sit-ups because I'm already in the habit. And like, that's the thing is like, you just need to, you just need to start with what you like, because if you start with something that you don't like, you will not continue. <laughs> yeah, that has been my problem the whole time of trying to get in shape. So that makes sense. I mean, I just got, I got, I got to pare it down a little. I think, think that that's, that's yeah. I gonna... think, I, th I think people get overwhelmed really quick by like, oh, this diet. You can't eat anything that you enjoy, and you have to spend an hour in the gym. It's like no, you spend I don't know, work out for ten minutes a day, and eat like cut out some sugar, and then like when you get ready you just like build on that that's why i say like a little bit better every day because those drastic changes that's like the yo-yo effect right like i can i can cut out uh, all dairy tomorrow but then like i'm like oh, well i still want to have this you know so just step by step i feel like that's that's a better approach 
I'm going to take that to heart. Well, we've reached the end here, but I like to end all my interviews talking with my guest about their finishing move. For you, that's the neutralizer. Now, we have already once gone through my normal three questions, so I've got three other questions now. So first, where did the name of your finishing move come from? Well, um, Switzerland is neutral. Okay. Neutralizer. That, that symbol, if you okay. Neutralize, if you neutralize somebody, you put them out of commission. So it's a it's a it's a wonderful pun it's a wonderful homage to my home country uh yeah that's did you come up with that was that was that a you thing that you came up with that name uh i would like to take credit for it Uh, there may have been somebody else that said i should use it and i was like okay i'll do it um but i'll i just take credit here for uh who is your least favorite person to hit the neutralizer on and why least favorite um i don't whether they're too heavy or no so so because like when i when i came through the ranks of fcw at that point it was one of those like could you hit your finisher on everybody like even the big show and i was like let me show you uh (laughs) so (laughs) it was one of those so like that's when it was like okay so what move can i do that um i literally could do to everybody um at you know after like 30 minutes of a grueling wrestling match um that i could do you know, five or six days a week. It was like, I want to have something that's super effective, fun, and I can do to everybody. So uh, thanks to that. Um, I think like what is usually scary is uh, if people are super sweaty or they slip or something like that, but that's more um, that. But there's nobody that I'm like, oh, that was terrible to hit the neutralizer on him. I mean, like, it's always fun to hit somebody like, is it like Big Show, Kali or Mark Henry? It's like somebody that's like really big. That's like a challenge. Um, or then you find like different ways to get into it. You know what I mean? So... Um, I love it. All right. And lastly, if you had to replace your finishing move with a famous move done by a wrestler of the past, which move would you choose? Well, I kind of already did that with the sharpshooter, right? Yeah. Well, I so, realized that when I was writing so, this down, but like, so. but, but it's, but that's technically your signature move. I would say like a signature move of yours, not well, a finishing move. Well, it, but, but it is a finishing move because I beat people with it. Right. All right. So, fine. Okay. Fair um, enough. So, so, so to me, but like, that would that would probably it because so um, I'm just gonna go way over time like I usually do and make a long story long and nerd out with you about wrestling uh, because that's what we do right so um, when I grew up I was also a huge fan of uh, Japanese wrestling like New Japan and what I really loved about because um, it's kind of you start with WWE that was the first thing I saw on TV and I'm like whoa this is amazing and then you learn about like all the other stuff that exists you know like ECW at that point and then WCW and so so you just like see all those different styles and then like CMLL and AAA and then like New Japan. It's just like, oh my God, there's so much different things going on. And what I always loved about the, the Japanese style is like they had a move, they had a submission, they had a strike. And each of that could be the finish. And they had like then those like weird, like random moves, like a clothesline can be a finish for anybody. German suplex can be a finish for everybody. So it put that kind of unpredictability into their matches that I may not have noticed before in others. So to me, um, when I was like, okay, I'm with WWE, so you have your finishing move with the neutralizer. And it's like, ooh, um, you know, it was like horrible circumstances with, with you know, Tyson Kidd. Um, but then I was like, cool, I want to pay homage to him. And then it was like, and then I asked Bret Hart as well for um, permission to do it. So then it was like, okay, cool. Now I have the sharpshooter. And then I was like, oh, and I can do the uppercut. And I got that to a point where people believe it's a finish because I beat people with it. So to me, um, long story, long story long, it comes full circle to the beginning when we talked about um, the different characters. Uh, Dusty Rhodes used to say, body of work. See, now it came back to me. So when people look back at my body of work, um, they can uh, see me in each of those incarnations. And through that body of work, I was able to establish a move set where so many things could be a finish, which I think makes my matches more unpredictable and hopefully, hopefully more more fun to watch. Um, other than that, let's just say Tombstone would be a pretty cool finish too. <laughs> that was the real long story. Short, short there. <laughs> long story long, right? Uh, but I know I said all go. that, but the Tombstone end of story <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, there's so many me. cool moves there's there really so many are. cool moves I, oh you I know think what tombstone is one of the best ones though yes you remember the cranium crunch of course from crush of course yeah it was you like could, you could pull that off too you could you could bring that back 
Uh, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe. Pitch it. See what happens. If you see me do it, if you see me do it on Friday, you know, or like, you know, <laughs> you know where he came from. I'm gonna, t- I'm like, yeah, that was because of the interview. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to do this day. I had a blast chatting with you. Oh, dude, thank you very much. We can talk wrestling all day, every day. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Definitely. All right, talk to you soon, man. Peace. Thank you. That was the Swiss Superman, Cesaro. God, I'm such a huge fan of that guy. I love chatting with him about whatever. I hope you guys enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. Now, now we got to get some of this uh, technicality stuff out of the way. Make sure that you go subscribe to Out of Character on whatever podcast platform that you listen on, whether it's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, whatever. Make sure that you go subscribe to this show on there. And if you can leave a review or a rating, please do that as well. It helps us out. It makes me happy and I enjoy it. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's where you can find the video of this show every week, clips from Raw, SmackDown, NXT, and a bunch more. Also, make sure you follow us on social media, WWE on Fox, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. That's where you can find all the stuff we're doing. And I know you're scrolling through your phone all day. So if you don't follow WWE on Fox, you're missing out on so much cool stuff. Okay, that's it. I'm done officially tapping out for now. Until next time, I'm Ryan Satin, and this is Out of Character.